Are you inadvertently letting your money slip away through seemingly harmless adult behaviors? You might be. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down those behaviors and how they're silently jeopardizing your financial stability. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Evan, a real estate agent and mortgage broker here to answer all of your questions. When you start earning money and becoming more self-dependent, it is on you to start making the decisions that were once made for you. Looking towards friends and families for guidance can help you, but it can also hurt you. A specific example is brand loyalty. While it is usually rooted in trust and familiarity, usually from your childhood, it can also lead to unnecessary expenses. The big brands that you see commercials for all the time and have their products featured at eye level on shelves in stores are depending on your loyalty. Brands like Lay's, Heinz, and Cheerios are known by everybody and have a perceived set value. However, there exist alternative brands that have equal value or even more value for even cheaper prices. The big brands can command higher prices based off of the reputation and branding. To combat this, the lesser known brands have to have better quality goods or more affordable goods to try to lure customers toward them. Your resistance to change and habitual tunnel vision can cause you to miss out on deals and trying other products. You may say that your Skippy's peanut butter is the best, but have you tried the store value brand option? Sure, maybe 90% is good, but for the $1.90 compared to $3.29, is that extra 10% really worth a buck 30 extra? Now I understand that peer influence and social pressure can force you to buy these big brand items, but in reality, it's not their wallets being affected. It's yours. Overspending on trips is another habit that we do that we should try to avoid. In America, we typically have fewer vacation days than our counterparts in Europe. So when we eventually go on vacation, we feel the need to make the absolute most of the experience. This mindset can be problematic because we use it to justify larger purchases because we think we have fewer opportunities for leisure. As a result, there's a tendency to overspend on trips, usually with high-end restaurants, fancy hotels, and costly day activities. We have to realize that you can still enjoy a trip, but not be sucked into the blatant tourist traps. A fond memory that I have is when my family and I went to Portugal and we went to Porto and Lisbon and we saw where the locals were getting their food. So for every breakfast and for some lunches, we would make our own food based off of local brands and some fresh product. It was great and we were able to actually enjoy what the locals were eating. Now we did go out to restaurants every once in a while, but again, we saw where the locals were eating and most of them weren't eating on the main strip. They were eating on some side roads, uh, and they were eating at more smaller family-run restaurants. And the food was fantastic and for a third of the price. Another way to combat limited vacation time is by going on actually more vacations, usually one, two, or three day vacations over the weekends or on smaller holidays. By doing this, you break up your hard days at work with more leisure time and you don't feel the pressure to go all out on vacations. For some reason, there's a social aversion to buying used or older models. If you're buying a phone, has to be new. If you're buying a car, has to be 2024. Now I get there are social pressures to try to impress your, your friends and show them that, yeah, I have money that I can throw around and not care about, but they may care for like half a second, but then they go back to dealing with the issues that are in their life. So at the end of the day, the only person that ends up caring about your new phone or your new car is you, and that affects your bottom dollar. So that new iPhone that you're considering buying, it may have three cameras and slightly better X, Y, and Z, but it costs a grand. And the one that is from a few years ago that basically does the exact same thing costs barely half. As a society, we need to realize that the value in an item lies in its functionality and suitability for one's needs rather than the, wow, it's shiny and new and I must have it factor. Frequently dining out and drinking out is another thing to consider. Now, I'm not saying completely stopping your social life. Life is about enjoying the smaller things and getting out and trying new things. What I am discouraging is that the frequency that people are now dining out and drinking out and not taking into account how it affects their finances. It's about finding a balance between enjoying the richness of social experiences and being mindful of your budget. The food and drinks you consume when you are out are considerably more expensive than if you made the same thing at home. So you may say that these purchases make you happy and that's great, but you can still be happy for a third of the cost. And finally, paying full price. Now there are times to pay full price and there are times to not. 
supporting a local business or a friend who's just starting? Absolutely, of course, 100%. But shopping at a big name brand online where they make hundreds of thousands of dollars a day? Maybe not. There is a lot of competition for your business, so with a little research, I'm sure you can find sales, discounts, and promotional offers. There are numerous chances to secure the same quality item at a fraction of the cost by being vigilant about tracking promotions, waiting for seasonal sales, and utilizing loyalty programs, they can significantly impact your overall spending. You should also consider installing web browser extensions that can compare prices, that can find you discount codes, and that can also find you really good deals that you wouldn't have found on your own. You should also learn to be able to walk away from a situation if it does not line up with your financial goals. By walking away and taking this pause, you allow yourself to reassess the situation, compare prices, uh, and game plan should you go back and try to buy it again. Investing in your financial well-being starts with being aware. If you see yourself doing any of these grown-up behaviors, it's now time to reevaluate your situation and potentially stop cold turkey. If you have any other topics you want me to talk about or any questions about this video, put them in the comments down below. And until then, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.